here, and today we're reviewing Star Wars The Princess and the Scoundrel. So I will be honest, I kind of had the same feeling as the Queen's Trilogy when I first started it, which, same with the Queen's Trilogy, um, of not wanting to actually read this book. I thought this book would be not my type, if you get what I mean, where, like, yeah, it's more of a love story, I felt it was not really geared towards me in introducing myself to it. However, this book was very phenomenal, it was very fun, and very interesting, and it had some cool callbacks in it. Not just to the movies, sorry, leather squeaking on the back would be annoying to you guys. Um, but yeah, so not only for like movie callbacks, but also callbacks to other books. Books I haven't read in six years. Like, stuff like that, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, let's get into it. Uh, just heads up, it's going to be spoilers from here on out. Uh, so for main characters, we're really going to focus on four, and then we're also going to talk about like two side characters sort of thing. Uh, and one of the main characters is a spoiler, by the way. So Han and Leia, obviously, we know Han and Leia, they're... Um, on their honeymoon in this book, they just, we get to see their wedding, we get to see basically the fallout right after Endor, uh, but yeah, obviously Han's just dealing with kind of settling down, and also realizing that he's marrying a senator who's also basically been at war her entire life, and doesn't know how to live any other way. And Leia's dealing with a lot more. She's also not only realizing that she needs to settle down and is marrying basically a scoundrel that really cares about her with a heart of gold, but also that she uh, is the daughter of Darth Vader who tortured her. Uh, so she has to deal with that throughout the book, and they bring it up a lot. She also de is dealing with trying to learn how to use the Force on her own. Because she doesn't want to bring um, Luke into it just yet. She does realize at the end that she might. Uh, we also have, um, as the main villain who only shows up at the back end of the book, Commander Beck, who is from... Um, Smuggler's Run, which is like one of the OG new canon Star Wars books, which was like crazy to me. It took me a second to realize who she was, but then I remembered it. I was like, holy crap, she's still holding out a grudge against Han, still kind of like precise and not e well, yeah, evil because she works for the Empire, but evil and just not that good of a person. <laughs> um, and then next we have Jens, who is the uh, Prime Minister of the planet that they end up named uh, Mardu Matters, or something like that. It's M-A-D-U-R-S. Um, he is trying to hold things together and trying to put on the facade of the Empire not being on his planet which is uh, obviously saw through. I, I thought he was kind of a jerk at first, but obviously he was always under surveillance by the Empire. I kind of did figure out the twist that the Empire was still there like right away, um, that something was up. Obviously I didn't think it was Beck, but I thought the Empire was there. Also, we have people on the high, uh, Halcyon, such as Captain Dicko and Riola. I do think it's funny that right when I finished this book, or right about when I was finishing this book, they announced that the hotel at Disney is closing down out of profit. I do want to talk about that a little bit at the end of this book, um, or at the end of this review with this book, because... It was a glaring issue in this book for me, and now that the high salon is closing down, 
it's also something that I've been talking about for a while that I would like to actually discuss. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that at the end. So, basically this story, we get to see three planets, well, two planets and a cruiser uh, as the settings. We get to see Endor, where we get to see Han and Leia get married. M uh, Matters, which is a ice planet that also is another issue that I have with Leia in this book, kind of, uh, but we'll talk about that in a second, but it's a pretty cool planet, it's a wa aquatic planet that's also a nice planet, and then we have the High Salon, which is the luxury cru cruiser that you used to be able to stay at when you went to Disney, um, but yeah, so, uh, Endor, obviously we all love Endor, seeing the wedding was really cool and everything, Matters brought up stuff about Hoth, about Han, Frozen, and Carbonite, and just some really cool underwater scenes as well as some ice scenes, and a cool culture. High Salon, the big issue that I had with that is it felt like it was just advertising the High Salon the whole time that they were on it. It did not feel like... I mean, it felt like it was necessary for the story, but it also felt kind of like it was an advertisement. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, so let's just talk about the story now. Um, I did say that there's two minor characters that I wanted to talk about. One of them is Khaled, who was a um, ex-Imperial contractor who lost a lot of money and then said that he was going to abduct Leia, so Han uh, got him scared and then arrested. And then he ends up saving the Planet of Matters, even though it was in a bad way, because he was asking for money. And then Zalma, who is a Natalin, who basically comes to save the day, and he's a technician. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, so Han and Leia decide to get married on Endor. They have this really nice, beautiful wedding. I thought this was actually going to be the whole book. I was wrong. Um, and they are... Uh, married by Luke, as well as uh, Chief Chirpa, or it was either Tebow or Chief Chirpa, or I'm sorry, Logray or Chief Chirpa, one of the two, I can't remember who. We also get to see Han's bachelor party, uh, which gets ruined by Ewoks, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, then we get to see, like, them kind of loading out. It does tie into Shattered Empire, to where Han does have to go off for like a chapter and then comes back. Um, it does not go for Leia's part of the story, which also happens in Battlefront 2, but that's also kind of like months later anyways. Uh, but Mon Mothma forces Leia to go on a honeymoon, but also to convince her, tells her to do it as a mission of like publicity that, oh yeah, the war's over, the Emperor's dead, even though the war technically isn't over. Um, people don't need to live in fear because it's this uh, Star Cruiser is taking its first time out of Imperial control to tour the galaxy. Um, so, it can... She convinces Leia. Han's a little against it because he's like, of course you're turning it into a rebel mission. But he does understand this is the only way to get Leia to do something like this. Uh, so they spend some time on the High Salon. And Han plays a poker game, or Sabat game, with some people um, that are part of the crew. And then this Khaled guy who's like, oh yeah, I'm broke. I heard the princess is on here. Maybe I could ransom her off. Not realizing that Han is Han, who then throws him into an escape pod, gets caught, and then they end up uh, throwing him in the brig, not Han, but Kalad, uh, because he's actually a stowaway. Um, at that, Leia takes the opportunity, she sent to communicate to Murdas, um, and 
they returned back with like a cryptic message. So she takes the opportunity, and this is the problem that I had, to uproot the entire tour because they're supposed to go to like some meteor shower. She uproots the entire tour to go to Martyrs. Or Matters, or however you pronounce it. I'm going to just say Matters for the rest of the video. Um, and, like, Han backs her up, but he's even kind of, like, on what I would say is my side, or I'm on his side, where, like, you're seriously using an opportunity to ruin everybody's time. Because they're originally supposed to go to a beach planet called Sinjak. So everybody's packed for nice weather and everything. And now they're going to an ice moon. Um, which obviously they end up saving the moon and everything. But still at the same time it's like... You, you're really, really... Kind of... Not being fair here. Um, again, it's a great thing that that happened and everything but still at the same time she it, it felt very I hate to say it like this but privileged um but yeah so anyway so they go to Martyrs everybody's kind of unhappy about it at first but it ends up being this beautiful ice sculpture planet and everything like that but there's something wrong um they notice that Jens is kind of being dismissive there's this giant black tower uh, where an old city used to be that shattered. So Han and Leia find a way to investigate after kind of asking around and everything. And it turns out that it's a giant space station that's plunged into the ice, firing a laser into the core to get a precious metal. Um, and also that is causing quakes around the world. So it turns out that how the that with how the station's blasting the planet, the planet will fall apart and die within a month. Uh, so Han and Leia meet up with Jens to confront him. Turns out that Beck was there. They have to run from Beck and everything and try to figure out what to do. They actually meet the actual rebellion that's on Matters and help them destroy the station. Leia actually uses the force to call one of the giant creatures of the planet to destroy the space station and uh, after that a part of the ship or a space station breaks off then is stopped by the Halcyon um, as the Rebel Alliance shows up to, to help or the New Republic shows up to help um, Beck is captured Han and Leia finish off their honeymoon and that is the entire story so like I said this is gonna be my big issue it did feel that 50% of this book was an advertisement for go to the Halcyon go to the Halcyon go to the Halcyon it's it's got all this cool stuff you should go and see it um, which is if you're living the experience in a $20 book that's fine but no average person has at least $4,000 to go and spend two nights in a Disney hotel and only be allowed to stay in the Star Wars section of a Disney park. I, I love Star Wars to death. It's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. I know as much as I can about Star Wars and everything like that. Even if I won the lottery, I would never justifiably spend that kind of money to go to Disney, to only go to a small fraction of one park by spending more money of staying at a hotel that's Star Wars themed. While, like, Disney is expensive to begin with, I just feel that that was always a bad idea. And now that they're closing down, I think they realized it was a bad idea. Um, I hope they, I kind of wish they would have revamped it, maybe. Maybe went and said, well, okay, you can't, you're, we're going to make it, I don't know, maybe $1,000 for two nights, and you do get access to the whole park, 
Um, however, there is a portion where you have to stay in the Star Wars park just for the experience. Like maybe the first day you could only stay at the Star Wars park, the second day you could go everywhere else. Um, but I do feel that that was a very bad idea on Disney's end, and I think it's finally showing. I do think that that affects this book too, because now, one, the Halcyon is not going to be something that people could go to. I mean, obviously, in the book, they don't say, oh yeah, everybody can, that is reading this could go to see the Halcyon. But, at the same time, they uh, kind of leaned into it too much where it felt like an advertisement, so I thought that that hurt the book, too. Um... You're basically advertising nothing now. But yeah, so I'm going to give this book a 8 out of 10. It was a lot better than I expected. However, it does get hurt by the advertisement of Halcyon. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and follow me on all my social media down below. It's that Nerd Ryan, signing